Welcome to my first build video. This series will be to do with building the Titan Rooster. The first episode is called Why and How. First of all, why? Well, why me? I'm just an ordinary bloke who builds drones. I've been doing it for about a year, so mostly it's things like this. And things like this. But occasionally, I do some things right. I started flying the Hubson. This is a great bit of kit. If you ever want to get someone into flying drones, buy them one of these. It teaches you everything you need to know. It doesn't have FPV, but it will teach you how to fly. It will teach you the basic controls. It is a great place to start. I then moved on to my first drone. It's missing all its parts because most of them are broken. In that journey, I basically destroyed a PDB, uh, two flight controllers, a camera, um, and that's part of this hobby. You are going to find things that break. So, the, I built this, it flew, I've had to retire it, it's now gone. But after that, I built this. This is a chameleon. This chameleon runs an Maytech F405 OSD flight controller, which I love. Uh, it has the oomph motors, um, some of the older oomph motors. They are excellent. I will put some specs on screen of what this actually has. It is a great drone. It is everything I need it to be. It's fast, it moves well, and it has. it's, it's just really nice. I enjoy flying it. It's made the hobby a joy for me. This wasn't the original setup though. Originally, it started life with a wonderful race flight um, flight controller. This is an excellent flight controller. I liked this flight controller. The only issue I have with it, it was way too fragile, which is why I went back to the F405 OSD. So, going back to the point, why a Titan Rooster? Well, if I love this, why don't I just do everything that's on this just that little bit better? And that's what this build is going to be. Everything is going to be upgraded. Everything is going to be better. I'm going to try and keep it the same as much as possible so I can go with what I know. And that's what this build is going to be about. So, what else is going to happen in this video? Well, I'm going to do some unboxing of all the parts that I've chosen and explain why I've chosen those particular parts with a little bit more detail on why particular things have stood out to me and why I've made certain decisions. So if you're into that, please stick around. If you're not, there's other videos out there that will tell you an awful lot more than I can tell you. After that, I'm going to do a set of build videos showing how I've gone about building it, maiden flighting, and then doing all those other bits and pieces everyone else does. So hopefully you're interested. If not, thanks for your time. So those of you who have stuck around, let's get on to it. So um, the first package is from Hobby RC. So it comes in a nice little package. It's an awful lot smaller than the um, chameleon package. So let's see what we've got. Usual stickers. Oh yeah. This is the um, use a new uh, carbon fiber weave, same carbon fiber, different weave um, on their frames, and they are that is really, really rigid. I, mean, I can really give that some stick. Um, they've also gone and put the so I can use my knife properly. They've also seemed to have put the uh, stickers on themselves already. So, oh no, no they haven't, so you can still put those on. Now, I don't use these bits of foam, I use Velcro on mine, um, because for me, I put Velcro on the bottom of my batteries, and that means they stick down better. But that is good carbon fibre, I mean that's the, the base, that's uh, the top plate, 
uh, a couple of the brackets for the on down the arms and obviously the arms so just interested to see if you hold up the arms they're about the, they're about the same thickness as the chameleons are so uh, they looked a bit smaller um, so when I do builds um, I use these buckets for storing all the bits in so I don't lose them so I chuck those things in there um, the reason I went for a rooster frame and the reason I, or I go with Armiton is because they do a really really great uh, warranty they are fantastic um, I use them all the time um, they're, they're, their warranty is basically any part of the frame I mean I have cracked a top plate um, you can see there we go so I cracked a top plate uh, they sent it sent me a new one um, it cost me the shipping but uh, the part cost me nothing um, so they're fantastic I mean my other frame this one that I broke and bent the arm on I wouldn't have had to worry about that with their warranty but I didn't have it on that so it's a bit of a shame but yeah I mean the frame is brilliant it's got the warranty it's a really strong frame it is effectively an evolution of the chameleon frame so really keen to see what it's like but what I'm really excited about is in here so some wonderful antenna tubes standard Armiton battery strap so what have we got here um, usual if you can see very clearly so uh, they're the bolts it's the crossbar member so um, I think these are all steel um, from memory and there's some plastic parts in here for doing the standoffs etc but I mean that's plenty of parts I mean they do come with spares so it makes it an awful lot easier to build I'm not going to go through those because they're not that exciting um, quite interestingly on the back plate they've gone for a slight change over the chameleon they've gone to a um, this piece so this is designed for a if you put your pigtail through so if I have a pigtail oh, I do um, you put that through the hole um, they do do a version which is specifically designed for a unified pro a TBS unified pro um, I've not gone for that I've actually gone for something different but I'll talk about that later on so let's put that in here um, so yeah that's quite nice oh they have done the unify sorry apologies they send you both the unify and the um, they send you the unify version as well so you can use that if you wish right so that goes in there so here's where they really shine on the uh, rooster frame so these are the back standoffs so they are what goes on the back of the frame for you to fit uh, for the back so to replace that piece there the orange piece and now the bits that um, I'm really excited to see um, so on the chameleon the front plates are aluminium this is titanium and it is beautiful look at that that is uh, so nice I mean I can't tell you how light that is that is such a wonderful piece of uh, engineering Oh, it's very very shiny. I was looking at whether I could anodize these but um, I will probably end up killing myself if I do that so I'm gonna not do anything with that but that is very very nice. That's, uh, they also send you some um, dog bone um, feet for so you don't bounce when you land. I tend to not use these I have some already. I tend to use the 3M Relax Cheapo these ones because you can get an awful lot of them for very little money and they do the job and also you get uh, a parts list oh and instructions excellent um, I mean there is a really good video um, and I will be doing a build video with these anyway so that is um, what you get in your rooster pack so what else was in that box so in that box was also the uh, PDB so let's open that up let's see what this is like so this is a, a newer version of the hub that I have in my chameleon and I'm now becoming capable of opening up the packaging there we go. 
So, let's open that up. So, this is the PDB, uh, so the power distribution board. Um, this is also the the video transmitter, so they've built them all into one. Um, so instead of having Unify Pro, um, which I've used on every other build I've ever had, um, I did try something else once and didn't like it, so I love my Unify Pro, So, I, but I thought I'd try something different. I know I've said I'm going to do everything the same, just slightly better, but I wanted to try doing this uh, because this allows me to not only remotely control my video, but also have my audio. Never flown with audio, we'll see what it's like. So um, what this also comes with is um, a dipole um, antenna, which is great for smaller builds, um, and that simply goes into this little slot here. Um, I think you screw that in. Um, or you can go to a traditional pigtail, um, so that can come out of the back of the drone. So that's nice. I, I quite like the idea of the clean build of this. So, um, And this works really well with my chosen flight controller because I can run a very small um, uh, ribbon cable between them which cuts down the amount of soldering I need to do so I can get a nice clean build. So this is an evolution of what I've currently got and it means I don't need, it means I need one less part in my build. So that's good. So the next bag is from Quadcopters. Um, so I was going to buy loads of my bits and pieces from Quadcopters, but they didn't quite have everything in stock that I needed to have. So um, let's get started. So um, this is the flight controller. So this is the evolution of the F4405 OSD. This is the F405 SD, which is um, STD apparently, so uh, who knows why they've changed it to that name, I don't know. Um, it has a better gyro on it, it has a barometer on it so you can do height, I've never had a uh, drone that has that so we'll see what that's like. I bought it because it's the latest version, um, It was. they are really really cheap um, compared to some of the other ones that are out there. Um, I'm just going to try and open this up without cutting myself or doing anything like that. So, flight controllers are the key to everything you do um, in drone flying. They are fantastic. So, um, it's a very similar layout to the F405 uh, OSD. Um, it's got a few other additional pins, I believe, from memory and a few LEDs that I've not seen before. The um, good thing about this is it has a little port on the back that you run a little oh, in here. ribbon cable between this and this and that does passes all your um, signal data through so that makes it a really nice tidy build on and they've um, they've improved their offering because they now give you two of them Whereas you only used to get one before, um, so you now get two of them. Um, so why why did I go for um, this? Well, as I said before, so I, my starting point in drone flying was the NACE 32 um, Rev 6. Uh, as an Afro flight one. Um, I had one of these that I blew up um, because I just didn't know what I was doing at this to start with and managed to completely destroy the chip, so I wouldn't even power up anymore. I then bought another one. Um, because I'm a sucker for punishment and that just wouldn't arm. It would arm every now and again uh, but it caused me no end of hassle. I didn't enjoy it because it wouldn't arm and when you're learning and turning up to an event with groups of people when you're sitting there flicking your switch trying to make it actually arm it, it's a right pain in the ass. So I got rid of that and I moved over to my uh, Lux V2. This is a great little board and um, there's nothing wrong with this. Um, I have other, no other people who fly these. Um, it's good um, for what it is but it is old older tech um, and doesn't have an OSD. Um, so then when I went to build my Chameleon the first time as I mentioned earlier I put in the Brace Flight V2 which is a great little board as I've said before but it was really fragile. This just suddenly stopped working when I was flying and you can get these replaced. They will replace them um, but it would cost me 20 quid ish to get shipped over to the UK. So this cost me 22 pounds so 
I this cost forty pounds when I bought it, so I decided that I would move over to Matex again, and I am very very glad I did. So yeah, I like these boards. This is a great for my build, um, and hopefully it's a straightforward build. Oh, it also comes with a set of soft mounts, so little rubber grommets to reduce the number, amount of noise you get. So, what else do I buy from Cord Coppers? Ah, uh, so I have the uh, camera. Camera-wise, let's just open this up. Um, I have gone slightly different. Um, so it's my other cameras are all um, run cams. This one is not a run cam. This is oh, it's a very nice little box that's quite difficult to actually get your fingers around. Um, is a run cam as a fox ear. Um, what is it? A Foxeer off the top of my head. Foxeer Arrow V3. Apologies. And it's the silver one. Um, so it's very, very pretty. So it goes very nicely with the uh, with the titanium. So it's going to look nice. Um, that's very important with your drone. So in here you get your Foxeer camera. That is small, nice little Foxeer camera. Um, ports on the back. Um, hopefully. I can do camera control on this um, directly from the flight controller. I will be attempting to do that. That's probably something I might not put in this video because I've never done it before. But um, I will probably attempt to record some of me trying to make that work. Um, so this has got the wider lens, the GoPro style lens. So good sense of view, field of view. It's um, 4.3 I think from memory and it has slightly different mountings to, it's got the more modern mountings so it should fit in the frame really nicely. So also in the box you get your usual instructions and you get usual QR code stuff. It's quite a nice box actually. Or you get a very Apple style little box at the bottom. And in there you get your lens cap, which is good. Put that on so I don't lose it. And in there you get some mounts, different types of mounts and some screws. And you get various cables including the cable you connect to the drone which are, hang on, here's a sign of quality difference between these so, oh they do they do silicon wires as well, silicon wires, silicon wires are lovely they are much easier to work with than anything else um, and they've also split off the, oh that's quite nice, uh, they've done so this is the controller, this is for changing your settings on the camera um, and they've put a little cable off the back of it that you can plug into, so that makes it a nice easy thing to build. Um, obviously I'll need to strip most of this cabling, um, you don't want all this extra weight and annoyingness around, so I'll probably snip most of this off and this will all be used for something else. But that's um, that's nice, that's uh, as good as I've had on my run cams. So what else is in the box? So uh, there's the boring lanyard, I managed to lose my lanyard so I'm Need one of those. Um, there is also, and this is a bit of logic for me, um, I also bought a spare rooster arm. Now, why have I bought a spare one? Because my frame is insured. Well, if I break an arm when I'm flying, which I'm probably likely to do, I want to be able to swap that arm out and then get one from Armiton, so they're sending it over from... Um, I think they send from Taiwan, even though they're an Australian company. Um, get them to send me another one to replace it, so I'm then always have a spare. So as long as I don't break more than one arm, that's an ideal scenario. I mean, let's just do a quick. That is a lot. You can really put some force onto that. That is a very strong arm. I also have bought from a previous build a receiver so I've gone for the XM Plus so the XM Plus is a much smaller version of the receiver I have in my other drones so why have I gone for this well the this is a much smaller build um, much smaller antennas so it's tiny um, I haven't got a spare um, uh, X4R which is my normal one I would use. I mean, this is a really simple build. So this is effectively, you have purely a power in ground, uh, five volt in, sorry, uh, ground, and a um, the, the signal data. So this will work on SBUS. SBUS is the my de facto um, protocol for 
communicating with my drone um, everyone uses it unless you're a spectrum user so these are really good and this doesn't do um, telemetry um, from as I understand it but I don't use telemetry on my builds I tend to use the inbuilt OSD and I prefer that so um, I went for this so this is different and lighter and hopefully better um, so I don't know where I bought this from but it was um, part of my build um, in that bag you get your usual instructions and um, you get some pin headers which I'll throw away and you get a tiny tiny little bit of heat shrink I mean I have tons of heat shrink floating around so useful to keep but not specifically useful in this scenario so um, for the motors and ESCs I went to electric wingman um, I bought various bits from them before they always seem to have stock of motors they are really good and they're really fast and the guys are really good for service so um, from them I bought my motors and ESCs so I bought one two three four motors these are the Titan on my Titan rooster so um, these are from Armiton as well they are the 2306 so 23 mil um, diameter um, and the six is the the height of the the stator, and they are 2450s, so they are um, a little bit faster that, and a bit bigger than the motors on my oomph. So they are my chameleon. So they are should give me a little bit more torque. So let's see what these are like out of the box. Try not to cut myself again. What's in the box? Well, in the box you get some usual bits and pieces. Now, I like motors that come in these boxes because I use these boxes for all manner of bits and pieces. So, um, my old armed motors came in little boxes like this, which aren't so good. But these come in proper boxes, which is nice. So, let's see what they're like. So, usual foam, Allen key. I have probably about a million of these, but if you haven't got any, they are useful. You'll have four of them. So, uh, these are the uh, the Titan motors so they are very nice they're a li little bit so they've got a naked bottom which um, sounds a bit rude um, but they are really light I mean that is very very light I mean they've got very very long cables I mean I really only need like this much of this this cable here so um, they've also got their, their sort of clever nut system where you put a sort of spacer over the top and then you screw that down and some people don't like it I do um, it is very much like the hype train motor. I mean, that is really quite smooth. So, and they're very pretty. And we'll go to the design of my rooster. Uh, that is the Titan on my rooster. So obviously, I have four of those. I'm not going to go for each one of them, um, but that's nice. In the little bag, you get. Let's just open up the top here. Another bag. Uh, so you get some more nuts that go on the motor bolts, motor bolts, let's say what they are, and that's the prop nut. So that's the bolt that goes into, that's the bolt that goes and holds the drone, the arm, the drone together. And this is the nut that goes on the top, and you've got two colours of them now, so that's quite nice. So those are really good. Um, yeah, so I went with these. Uh, a lot of people tell me you should go for T-Motors or um, any of the many other motors that are out there but I really wanted to use these because I really like my oomph motors, they've got great torque um, and that's what I like in my flying. I also bought from Electric Media Man a, um, my ESCs, so the ESCs I've gone for are unlike everything else I've said where it's ever so slightly better, are exactly the same ESCs that I use um, for my other drones because I like having these go wrong more often than not not because speed decks are bad but because they take an awful lot of punishment and um, it's sometimes just easier to troubleshoot by just replacing these so I have loads of these around so I've just decided I'm going to use the same thing um, I did look at the 32-bit versions where I can do telemetry and various other bits and pieces but realistically I don't use telemetry on my flight controller so I don't see the need today to do it I might do in the future and these are easy to upgrade um, just replace them they're straightforward but this is where I went for the same thing I've gone for before so the last thing that came through today is the video antenna so I went for a 
Luminaire AX2 stubby. Um, so circular polarized antenna, um, right hand polarization. Um, so it's tiny. Uh, this is really very, very small. Um, it's trying to keep it away from the props as much as possible. So why would I go for this? Now normally I will go for a TBS Triumph. These are fantastic. I've These are basically bulletproof. They are expensive, but they are fantastic. I've never had a problem with them. Um, they are really resilient and never had a problem at all. I mean, I have tried other things, so I did try a um, Menace. Uh, this was good. Um, really good signal, but as you can see, I managed to crack the outside of it, which wouldn't be a massive problem, but I also managed to take the end off it, and that was on the first day of using it. So I have opted to go even stubbier than my stubby, um, and that should fit on the back of the drone. Right, thank you for those people who have managed to sit through the last 25 minutes of me prattling on about what I'm going to do, what I'm building. Hopefully you found it mildly entertaining or interesting in some way, shape or form. Um, so I will be doing a, another video which will be me doing a dry assembly of the rooster frame. So I just want to make sure all the parts fit and everything makes sense. So that will be the next one I do. Um, this is my first build video series, so I am learning as I go. So if you have any suggestions or comments, please let me know. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please like it um, and share it. If you want to see more, please subscribe and I will be doing more content. Thanks very much.